Hello and welcome to this second tutorial video for Train Sim World 2. Today we'll be covering the Train Sim World 2 Rush Hour vanilla trains, so none of the other extra add-ons from any other layers. We are now at Boston South Station on the Boston Sprinter route. In front of us here we have an Amtrak ACS 64 electric locomotive. These trains are based on the Euro Sprinter trains that can be found in Europe. Um, they were built by Siemens Transportation and they have a top speed of 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles an hour. Behind them we are hauling Amfleet coaches and there is no cab car provided so at the back of the train we just have some dead coaches. We will be driving this train in a tutorial manner from here to Boston South Station. We will not be going all the way to Providence and uh, as uh, you could probably expect we will be running late because I'll be taking this very slowly in order to um, anyway, guide you all through the process. So the first thing we're going to do to set up the train is over here we're going to insert the reverser handle. Uh, you can click on this or use Control w then we're going to move it to the forwards position. The reverser controls on the keyboard are W and S. Now what we're going to do is we're going to unlock our doors. Then we'll come over here to our front headlight. And I'm going to turn these to dim and the ditch light to on over here. Front headlight is controlled with the H key and the ditch light is controlled with the J key. So the ditch lights are these lights down here, these two, and these are the ones that flash when we have the horn or the bell on. Uh, up here, these are the main headlights, and I'm gonna have them on dim, just whilst we leave the uh, station out in the open. There's not really a need, because it's day, there's no need to have them on high, um, but I can have them on bright, but you can see it makes not much difference it's uh, oh, that's off actually but you can see the difference between dim and bright there is some difference but it's not really necessary to have them on bright whilst we're out here in the open uh, is that on flash that is not on flash uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply full independent brake this is a personal preference thing you don't have to do that and i'm going to release the automatic brake and i'm going to put the brake mode into passenger The next thing I'm going to do is I'm. I didn't turn the wipers on. Uh, let's have them off, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to come over to the back panel, and if you want to have your safety systems on, follow these steps. If you don't, don't follow these steps. I'm going to turn access off, ATC. Uh, sorry, I'm going to turn access on, ATC on, and the alerter on. The alerter is a vigilance device, so if the, the computer on board does not detect any controls inputted, it will uh, sound this device, and if you don't reset it within a certain period of time, the emergency brakes, blah, blah, brakes will apply. <laughs> Access is a speed enforcement system, that stands for American Civil Speed Enforcement System, and basically it knows the line speed and will apply penalty brakes if you overspeed. It will not provide you with braking curves as ETCS does. And if you overspeed, it won't immediately apply the brakes. There is some time tolerance before that happens, especially when the speed reduces and you haven't quite reached that speed yet. Uh, it also will not apply penalty brakes at all if you're in the suppression brake mode, which on this train is 66% automatic brake. Um, that's about everything for the access. Oh, the other really key thing is that access may not always reflect the line speed. So where the line speed is lower than the access speed, you must still follow the line speed. So you're following the lowest speed provided. Over here with ATC, that stands for Automatic Train Control. And this reflects in-cab signals. So there are line side signals on this train. However, uh, they are also displayed here on our cab signal device. So as we can see in front of us, uh, well we can't see, but we got a shunt signal and that's saying approach. And we got our restricted, restricted speed to 10 mile an hour. But you can see over here, that's flashing because of access. So there's no signaling system speed restrictions. 
when there are signaling system speed restrictions, though this will change over to ATC. ATC will pretty easily um, apply the brakes, so you've got to stay on top of your speeds there. Uh, where ATC is lower than line speed, you must obey uh, ATC. Where ATC is above line speed, you must obey line speed. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to close our doors and get ready for departure. So everything else is fully set up. We just got to release our independent brake. That can be adjusted with the square bracket buttons on keyboard. Uh, and we're going to apply some power, not too quickly because this thing does accelerate pretty fast. So 13% power. You can apply and decrease power using the A and D keys on the keyboard. Another thing to point out is that uh, this livery here is a one of a kind livery. Um, it's, this is actually a real livery and I, th I personally think it's pretty cool. Uh, but there is no physical difference between this livery and any other ACS 64 train. If there are any other uh, slight visual differences between your version of the game and my version of the game, that could also be because I'm running an excessive amount of um, enhancement packs just to make my driving experience more immersive. I won't link them below because uh, I couldn't be bothered. Um, but you can find them around the place, mainly on Train Sim Community, if you look hard enough. Uh, so I was briefly overspeeding there. Uh, so I just used the dynamic brake, which is over here on our combined power handle. It's not very effective because unlike an EMU, the dynamic, the dynamic brake only applies to the driving controls. And using the dynamic brake alone, you will not be able to stop the train. So if I apply full dynamic brake, you can see it doesn't stop pretty quickly and it won't stop it at all. So you can, I, I will apply it fully just so you can see what I mean. So as the train slows down, you can see that the brake force decreases until you get to about 1.3 miles an hour where it completely cuts off. So it will not stop the train. Uh, if you want to completely stop the train, you can use the automatic brake, which I believe applies some level of dynamic brake. Uh, but the automatic brake applies air brakes along the whole length of the train and the dynamic brake in this locomotive. The indirect brake, that's the black, uh, black handle on the brake stand, that only um, applies air brakes to the uh, locomotive. Here over here we can see uh, a normal ACS64 who's waiting for us to depart. Uh, so the speed limit has just jumped up to 15 mile an hour. So you can see how I was talking about ATC jumping up before the line, or access rather, jumping up before the line speed does. So we can see um, that because the line speed has jumped up, the, AT, the access speed has jumped up as well. However, uh, the rear of the train has not yet passed that point. So uh, we have to wait for the rear of the train to get through. So as you can see, I remember I said, follow the lower of the two speeds. And you can see access has just jumped up to 30 mile an hour. Uh, but you must always follow the lower of the speed limits provided. You can see in the cab as well, ATC uh, is telling us that based on the signal aspects alone, we can go up to 125 miles an hour. So ATC has no access to the uh, to the line speeds. Uh, it's a bit of a stupid system how they have you know two systems that can't really talk to each other. So it's telling us we've got a clear 125, which could at a glance be read as the line speed is 125. But um, that clear 125 does not authorize you to go up to 125 mile an hour. It only authorizes you to go as fast as access tells you. Uh, and that's basically telling you that uh, there is no speed restrictions based on the signals. So we're gonna accelerate up to 30 mile an hour. If, you, uh, if it's a wet day and you need to use the wipers, the wipers are... Oh, where are they? <laughs> uh, they're over here on the right-hand side panel. You can turn them to intermittent, slow, or fast. But it's not a rainy day, so I'll leave them off. Uh, windshield heat and windshield wash do nothing at the moment. Uh, these function buttons, you can play with them, but they're not really critical. You won't have to use them in everyday driving. Uh, these buttons control, you know, pantograph, up, down, MCB, and the uh, desk light, so that turns, you know, lights on and that turns our cab light on. 
I don't like driving with a cab light, so I won't use a cab light. To stop this train, I'm going to use the automatic brake. We're going to go some minimum application to start off with. And as we get close to the end of the platform, we're going to go a slightly stronger application. So suppression is 66% brake. And now I'm going to start pulling it back. To control the automatic brake, that's the red handle. Uh, you use the uh, semicolon and apostrophe keys. So you can see with minimum application, or with the automatic brake rather, some uh, dynamic brake is applied. Okay, and we'll open the doors as normal. And I'm going to stop this part of the tutorial here, but if you were continuing on, I would recommend raising your lights to bright just past this tunnel. And uh, yeah, that is the ACS-64 electric locomotive. We'll now join back in uh, Boston South Station, but this time in the F40. PH. We now find ourselves back at Boston South Station, this time in an F40PH-3C. This train is operated by MTBA, that's the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority, in this beautiful pink livery, and we have uh, CTC cars, um, ca coaches behind us with a cab car at the back. So, first thing we're going to do, we're going to jump back into our cab. We're going to insert the reverser and we're going to put it to the forwards position. Same keyboard controls as the ACS64. Then we're going to turn our control and fuel pump, generator field and engine run on. We're going to run over here, we're going to turn our gauge lights on, that's a personal choice, I like them on, and our step lights. Then we're going to jump over here, we're going to turn our headlights at the front to dim as before and this does not turn the ditch lights on. I think the ditch lights come on with full uh, headlight um, brightness. However, if you apply the horn, they do start to flash. And unlike many American trains, this train will not apply the bell automatically when you apply a horn. So uh, that's pretty nifty. Uh, one cool thing about the horn on this train is that there are two horn modes. This mode here, applies the horn in a solid, steady blast. This horn will stop and play the long, long, short, long sequence that is required for a level crossing. So that's that. Uh, we can now open our doors. Over here on our back cabinets, we will turn our platform lights, our front number lights, our engine room lights, our front uh, we will not turn the front marker lights on. Uh, we will turn the we leave the alerter stuff on. And we're going to open up this fuse cabinet. We're going to turn on the safety devices and the warning devices. Warning devices is your alerter, and safety devices is your ATC and access combined. Our access and stuff is displayed on this screen, which is a little bit more analog than the last one, but it is the same functions. And we have two acknowledge buttons. We have this alerter acknowledge and this general acknowledge. Uh, so yes, we've got the same sort of uh, applications here. Uh, this train will only, with uh, access and ATC turned on, will only be able to run at a maximum of 90 miles an hour. Uh, because that's the top speed of this locomotive and brake uh, coach combo. Right, so we're ready to depart now. We'll turn our cutoff valve to in and our MU2A valve to lead or dead. And we'll release our automatic brake and bail off our independent brake. Independent brake here is the yellow brake and the automatic one is the top black brake. Okay, we can now apply power and get moving. This train has a separate power throttle. It does not have a dynamic brake. You can see where the dynamic brake would have been here and that's been bolted up and covered. But the dynamic brake does turn on when you use the automatic brake as it does on the ACS-64. If you want to get a bit more advanced with this train you can also jump to the back 
and this will apply the emergency brakes I think but we'll jump to the back and uh, we can turn our marker lights on with control H that's this button here let's jump back to the cab turn our power off and if you jump to the back of the train you can see these red marker lights are now turned on and they are not on by default so if you want a little bit more driving uh, immersion you can turn them on uh, there's no way to turn the passenger lights on on these trains I don't think um, by the front cab so you'll have to leave them alone we're going to do the same situation as last time we're going to run <coughs> round to back bay um, and do some passenger loading sequences there Uh, so this locomotive is a diesel locomotive as opposed to electric so it's a little bit more sluggish to get moving um, and uh, it has much lower acceleration so feel free uh, as long as over here on our ampage meter amperage meter on the HUD or on this power knob this dial here as long as you keep the power within the green zone so up to about uh, 900 amps or possibly up to 1000 amps as long as you keep it within there and you're not overpowering the engines and that's fine um, so that I think from starting that's about the throttle notch 3 or 4 maybe possibly notch 5 but uh, once you start accelerating the power drops off quite a lot so you can more or less go to full power at about 20 miles an hour and you'll still be um, within the uh, safe limits without overpowering the engine. Okay, we can go up to 15 mile an hour now. So we'll go up to notch 5 on the power. And as you can see, it does take a little bit of effort to build those uh, amps up because uh, this is a diesel loco so it can't just summon power automatically and it can't just turn the power off automatically either so um, be diligent with that when you're applying power is make sure that you pull the power off well before you reach the speed limit because uh, otherwise you might risk over speeding and if you've got ATC or access turned on that won't be a pretty sight so you can see here I'm at 20 miles an hour and I've got throttle 8 and that was just clipping um, over throttling the engines without actually overpowering them. So I'm going to pull the power off here and go a little bit of brake just so that we kill our acceleration. But you can see the amps take a lot of time to, to pull off um, and they also take the same amount of time to apply. So it's sort of like a steam locomotive, just a little bit quicker than a steam locomotive if you've driven them. Uh, it takes it does take a while to uh, apply and release that power so battling the grade I'm going to use independent brake rather than the dynamic brake it's a little bit more inefficient you probably wouldn't use this in real life because it can wear out the brake pads on the air brakes much quicker but there's no dynamic brake applied here and to stop the train I'm going to use my automatic brake I'm going to go a bit of application here 12% to start with. Uh, so this train, whilst it might slow down pretty, pretty, uh, pretty slowly, pretty sluggish, uh, it does stop fairly quickly, uh, and we can see now that we're getting some amps diverted towards dynamic braking. And if you want the brakes to release even faster, you can bail them off with the indirect brake, and that will bail all the air out of the locomotive. Once you're sure that you're in the whole platform you can stop the train. Generally if possible you should wait until the front of the train hits the um, hits the uh, front of the platform or where there's um, a low platform with a little high disabled bit you should try and keep uh, the front door in that uh, disabled area if it's not big enough for a whole coach. And uh, yeah we've got our doors here. Now as with the previous route if uh, I was continuing the drive on which I'm not I would here turn our front headlights to bright. So that is the process for doing the driving of the F40PH in uh, MTBA livery. Uh, now we're going to return back this time at Stoughton 
in the cab car and I'll show you how to get moving in the cab car. Hello everyone and uh, welcome back uh, to the Boston Sprinter. We are in a CT something or other cab car and we're at Stoughton. This is on the unelectrified branch. Uh, we are on the map here. Uh, there are some small sidings down here at the south side of the station. That's called Stoughton Layover but we are here at Stoughton Station. And uh, you can tell that we have come from the right-hand branch of Stoughton Layover because none of the train is in the disabled area. This is a really weird station and, you know, it's really quite typical of uh, American commuter rail because to stop at the station you have to block an intersection, uh, which obviously isn't brilliant. Um, uh, and the front of the train is also hanging onto this intersection as well, which the game obviously thinks we're not blocking. That's really, really nice. But uh, every door on the train sort of is on the platform, and maybe not this one. Uh, but yeah, it's a bit of an inconvenience if you're a disabled person, because um, there is facilities for a disabled uh, person to use, but not really. And uh, we've got a German sign up here, that's nice. So uh, let's hop into our cab. We can see it's a bit different. We've got a bit more empty space to work with. Um, that's a door and this is not, or it is a door, but this door will not open, um, obviously, when the uh, normal stuff applies when we're opening our passenger doors. Uh, here we have a bit of a simplified workstation. We've got throttle, reverser, horn, which looks more like a foot pedal, and our automatic brake. No independent brake, no dynamic brake, uh, only auto brake on this one. So let's start off by applying the cutoff valve and we're going to set that to passenger. We'll apply our reverser key and put you into forward. And if we just look around we can see some other things. We can turn our brake reset. That's not going to do anything because we don't have the brakes on. Overspeed indicator, that works with access and ATC. Head end power, that's fine. We'll leave our marker lights off. Our cab lights we can turn on. Have our alerter reset, our cab signal at knowledge. Cab speed control switch normal cut out. We're going to leave that normal. Cab heater and headlights. We're going to turn our headlights to dim whilst we're out here. Uh, we've got a sander for the loco and sander for the cab end. And um, that's pretty much everything. Uh, over here we should have a fuse box somewhere. Maybe not. Let's turn our alerter fuse on and our cab signal and safety fuses on. Uh, if you're on PC, you can use Shift, Enter, and Control, Enter for them. And uh, yeah, let's get our right-hand side doors unlocked. You can see that the marker lights on this loco are not applied, so we'll jump back to this locomotive and hit K for the front marker lights. And now they're turned on. Uh, the front marker lights are also over here on this back panel. Right. So we're going to be driving from here to Canton Centre, and we're not going to go any further than that. Yeah, I, I find this, you know, this is just such bad planning. It's just dreadful. And not even having boom gates or anything, it's just a train. Like it or not, there's a train. Um, Anyway, let's get back to the tutorial. So our door closing sequence is about to be finished, so we're going to apply or release the brakes in uh, preparation for that. Brakes will take a while to release because they're on the whole train. And once our BC has hit zero, we will apply pressure. No, not a pressure, a power. Getting my words mixed up still. Okay. We'll start to apply some power. It's a bit harder to tell um, whether you're going to overpower the engine um, and it's a bit hard to tell whether you're actually getting power to the engine so you can always jump back to the back see if there's engine power being generated. If there isn't, let's check, we can look up here into our compartment and turn the generator switch, engine run and EP brake control. Now you should hear that the engine starts to rev up we actually start moving. Uh, so because you can't see how many amps are being generated, you basically have to just kind of keep your wits about you and um, 
run off the same principles that you were if you were driving the F40. So try and um, try and remember what kind of settings you would use or what power applications you would use at certain speeds uh, for your F40 and um, that will uh, help you when driving the cab car. It's a bit harder to maintain speed because you've only got the one brake so um, that will apply some much sharper applications. Okay. Go off the brakes there and a bit of brakes. So if I apply brakes for just a little bit of time you can see how quickly they jump up over the whole train. Uh, obviously full application is like quite a lot um, of uh, brake pressure so um, it, it you'll get used to it uh, but it's a bit more of an effort you've got to actually be a bit tactical about you know when you apply the brakes for how long um, <clears throat> because if you apply the brakes um, even if it's an emergency brake application uh, if you or like a full service brake because you're over speeding say if you have uh, we'll just throttle up to get up to this 40 limit if you are coming down to a certain speed limit say 40 miles an hour and you're in full brake I would release start to release that brake when you've hit 50 because there's going to be some re residual pressure left in the uh, in the air hoses so if you release the brake when you hit 40 it's going to keep braking you until you get to about say 30 probably um, and probably don't want that to happen so um, yeah try and release the brakes a bit early so that your brakes are fully released as you hit the speed limit and it also gives a nicer ride for the passengers uh, if you have left the brakes on a bit too long there's no interlock between brake applications and uh, power applications so you can in theory have your power on whilst um, the brakes are on so you can try and fight the brakes a bit but you do run the risk of having wheel lock ups and wheel slips and it, it you know in real life that would absolutely wreck the loco because um, it doesn't have to work really hard to uh, try and push the train with the brakes still left on so try and avoid that but you know if you have to you can Okay, we'll go a bit of brakes. Got some box cars there. Uh, if you're wondering why there are so many freight cars but nothing to actually haul them around, uh, that's because the uh, only trains that can run on this part of the D, uh, line have to have uh, cab signalling, so ATC and access. And the only CSX trains that we have modelled in this game they don't have that kind of cab signaling. So in reality, they would there would be some CSX or Norfolk Southern trains running um, through freights or locals on uh, the Northeast Corridor. But, um, or at least some parts of the Northeast Corridor, like there are some quite large yards in places, like up here or you know, around the place. So, um, it's... Uh, there would be freight services in real life, but it's just not really possible to have them implemented in-game in a drivable manner. Uh, but there are locomotives dotted around the route, and there's nothing stopping you from playing around with them, but um, points and uh, signals are set up so you won't be able to access the main line without spanning. Right, let's jump back to our cab. Our next stop is Canton Centre in 1.4 miles. So uh, this line is more or less completely single track um, and it gets a bit double track outside Canton Centre. And we've already got the next train on this branch pulling into um, Canton Junction, which is this station. Weirdly enough, even though it's a pretty big junction, not every train stops, which is a bit of a stupid planning idea anyway. But who am I to judge?
Okay, coming up to half a mile to Canton Junction. Get a bit of brakes. Uh, so, with the uh, ACS 6D4, I find it's fairly easy to use some aggressive driving. Um, you know, waiting really late on the brake applications, uh, being a bit nasty with the um, throttle applications. Um, but you can get away with it just because how quickly the brakes apply, how quickly they release, how much flexibility you have. You've got three brakes to play with and everything else like that. Um, with this train, however, uh, it's better to have a more defensive braking style. Um, so I would prefer, with uh, the cab car especially, to be arriving into platforms slower than normal. Um, than to um, than to risk overrunning, because that that is quite a quite a large risk. Uh, so ATC is guiding us down because I think there's a red signal coming up at some point. Probably the platform start at Canton Junction is at danger. So um, uh, ATC is just having a bit of spasm, and you when ATC starts spasming, you've really you've really got to be on your ball because if you don't. Um, if you don't get down to that speed, it will give you an emergency break, and you can't really escape that. <clears throat> okay, let's go. Bit of brakes. We're going to try and keep this last door on the disabled area. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> front of the train is still well in the platform, and uh, we're all good. So that is how you drive all of the trains on Boston Sprinter. And next we'll look at the trains for Navaker Dresden. Welcome everyone to RISA. Today we will be looking at, uh, well not today, uh, all over the place. Uh, we're going to now look at how to drive the trains on Navaker Dresden. We're going to be starting off with this Deutsche Bundesbahn liveried uh, 363 class V60 shunting locomotive. This is diesel powered, the uh, first German diesel, well, it's an evolution of the first German diesel. We had a 363 before this, but it was in red livery. We've got five tankers and we're going to take these around to the chemical plant. We're not going to go the whole way, but um, I'll, I'll give you enough opportunity to see how you actually drive this train. So coming into the cab, it's very different to anything we've seen before. Uh, but that's probably expected considering we're in a whole other country. So the first thing we're going to do is going to turn our engine room lights on. Going to turn our cab light on. You can turn that off if you want. We're going to have our front left headlight on, our rear left headlight on, our front center headlight on. Actually, we can probably turn our front rear headlight off. Our f front right headlight on, and we're going to leave the rear center light off. Stem lights we'll have on, instrument lights we'll have on, and engine light we will have on. We turn our master key on, and. Um, we will have, these are our PZB buttons, I'll do an explain on how to use PZB probably in the Talent 2, uh, but we'll just stay tuned for that, that'll be later in the video. We've got a wiper controls over here, this is our fine control valve, I generally wouldn't play with that unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, this is our train brake and our direct brake, so I'm going to go some direct brake application and some uh, train brake release. Next one I'm going to do is I'm going to press change over and that's going to set this driving position as the primary one and I'm going to throw the reverser to forwards and that's now going to nudge back to the middle so middle is fine it's still in forwards this is our throttle and uh, now we're ready to go I'm going to release our brakes and uh, we are now ready to go. So we're going to go a bit of power. Uh, the throttle on this train works in a very weird way. So it's like a joystick. You have to hold uh, into position and then it will hold the, tr the uh, throttle there. Um, and then if I want to increase it, I can increase it. And if I want to decrease it, I can decrease it. Uh, but yeah, that's how the train works. Uh, I'm not sure if the brakes are still applied. They might be 
Uh, but as a shunter, we got ourselves the same kind of controls that a steam train would use. Um, that's just for high power. Sounds like we do have the brakes still on. Yeah. So I will make sure that they are all released. But we can still apply power. Uh, so we basically got 10 kilometers to go. We're not going to go the whole distance. But I'll show you how this train works. Uh, it doesn't go too fast because it's um, it's got these um, drive rods down here that will fall off basically if you get to a certain speed. So um, you can't really go too fast with them. So yeah, that's how you get the train moving. It's a, a nice little train to drive and the scenarios are pretty neat with it. Uh, basically you do some runs with oil train up down, up uh, around this part of the line and down to uh, the fuel works and then there's some maneuvering runs around the fuel works. Uh, so that's basically how you drive the train. Um, <coughs> I'll hit the power back to neutral and I'll show you how do you actually stop the train. So, going to go a bit of train brake application. This is a Westinghouse type brake. So with lat, nothing's happening. If I go service apply, we're going to apply brake and now throw it back into lat and it's going to hold the brake application there. If I then hold it into release, it's going to start releasing the brakes. Uh, but yeah, that's how the brakes work. And uh, that's more or less how you drive the Deutsche Bahn 363 V60. Uh, next time you see me, I'll be in the uh, well, be in one of the freight trains. Okay, we are back in Reiser with our MRCE uh, class 185 electric freight locomotive. These are very powerful locomotives with a top speed of 150 kilometers an hour. So uh, let's jump into the cab. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to insert our reverser handle and put it to the forwards position. There's nothing really to play around with these screens. You can look at some things with them. You can obviously change the contrast and stuff like that. Next thing we're going to do, I like to drive with the AFB on. That is, if we just cycle through our panels, that is this panel here. RFB. RFB. And now you can see there's a little RFB. blue bug that's popped up on the screen. So with the R key, uh, R and F buttons, you can control that, and that's your speed set. All right, next thing I'm going to do is release the brake. I'm going to go some headlights, and uh, we've got to come onto this back panel, and we've got to turn our headlight, our signal lights to headlights. That is the main part of the setup complete, and now you've just got to drive. So we've got our lights on now. You can obviously turn them up. Uh, mark lights. Oh, that's um. The control valve on the rail driver. Oopsies. Uh, so we can keep having our headlights. We can turn them to bright now and uh, they'll use the inside lights. So brakes are fully released and uh, we can apply power and you'll see how easily this thing gets moving. We've got a fairly long, fairly heavy train behind us. Several million dollars worth of cars there and uh, once this thing gets torque it just goes the hard part about it is getting the torque without having too much wheel slip. Because uh, if you go full power, sometimes it'll just start slipping all over the place. And that's more of a problem in the fact that it's based off of a passenger train design, so it only has uh, not many bogies. But you can see back here that we've got sparks flying all over the shop. Um, uh, so the hard part is getting it moving. But uh, once you've got that part down, it isn't very. Uh, it's not too bad. I'll go a bit of sand. There goes the talent too. And if it gets really bad you can just cut the power off completely. And uh, we'll wait for the... Shouldn't be moving. Don't know why it says it is. What's going on with these front wheels? Come on. I'll go some electric. Oh, okay. We'll go some electric brake. That should stop them. Or it doesn't. Okay, uh, that doesn't matter. 
we will go some power in the normal fashion. Just hope that that does the trick. But yeah, it can be a bit finicky to get moving, but once you have got it moving, it is an absolute dream to drive. Uh, but yeah, we got a lot of these uh, articulated car wagons. Um, but uh, if we come to the back, basically we're, we're pulling up the slack. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, inertia involved with that. Um, so the back of the train isn't is only just starting to move. But once it does start to move, we can apply more power, obviously. So the front of the train is hitting 0.2 kilometers an hour. I think this part of the train is probably going a bit slower than that because it takes a while for the torque to get through. But um, now we are moving, we can go a bit of power. And you can see now the whole train is moving consistently. Got a bit of wheel slip going on, but our wheel slip protection is doing its thing. So we're, yeah, we're not wheel slipping that bad. If you're concerned, you can pull the power back. And you can see we jump out of wheel slip. But yeah, this thing will accelerate pretty, pretty fast for freight train, it has to be said. Um, you know, this is the sort of acceleration I'd expect from a slow passenger train. Um, come on, stop slipping. Uh, but same deal as the last train, I won't go too far or too fast with this loco. But uh, yeah, that's basically how you drive the train. If you are interested in turning your safety systems on, they are on this back panel. Um, there's LZB on this train as well. Um, and I'm not sure if it works, it might. Okay, and uh, we'll stop the train here at Riser. Okay, turn our power off. And we have three types of brakes here. We've got our direct brake, that's for locomotive only, and that's only air brakes. We have our electric brake here, which is the dynamic brake basically, and our train brake, which also simultaneously applies the electric brake. And uh, this thing does stop pretty quickly as well, with the power of the um, dynamic brakes and the air brakes as well. So if I go to full brakes, full service brakes, you can see this thing does stop, you know, sort of on the level of a passenger train. So once you've got this thing moving, it behaves almost like a passenger train. It really does. Um, but yeah, getting it moving is the hard part. So uh, yeah, that's how you drive the MRCE 185. Okay, we are now at Meissen on the Meissen branch of this route, which is here on the map. And we have this DB Reggio BR143 in front of us. These are some very cool trains. Uh, they're very similar to the DB BR112s that you get with the Hauptstrecke Hamburg Lübeck route add on. And um, we have behind them some double deck coaches. Uh, I'll do a video, uh, not a video, I'll do a, another section of this video later driving the cab car as uh, I did with the uh, MBTA train set. So in the cab, uh, if you look around, it's very different to the other German trains that we've driven so far. There's a lot of variability here. We don't have a throttle per se. We've got a force selector, which tells us, or tells the train how hard we want to apply the power and brake. But basically, you control this train with our speed selector. So it's always controlled with an AFB, essentially. So on the previous train, you had your throttle and your AFB. On this train, you only have your AFB. So we're going to come over here, the first thing we're going to do is send our headlights to white, on and white. Uh, we're then going to turn our master key on and forward, that's over here next to the um, AFB control. We're going to have our brake key on and we will release some of the brakes and unlock doors on the right hand side with the door selector and the passenger doors function. So over here on this panel here, we've got our LZ LZB controls, our headlight brightness, which we can turn up to full beam and uh, leave it in the middle for normal. We've got our horn, our brake bridging and our sander. Over here, we've got train lights, which we can turn on. Train line power, I'm not going to mess with any of this stuff, but we've got our electrical stuff. Traction motor fan, compressor, handbrake, you know, 
all of the normal stuff. You know, over here we got our cab light, which can now have a dim or bright. I prefer off. And um, yeah, that's uh, how that works. So over here, we can uh, turn our instrument lights on. We're gonna leave our desk light off. I won't. I won't be using running program um, or traction brake program. Um, the auxiliary control, I'll show you this. So the force selector basically tells the train how much, you know, what percent you want to apply the, the power. Um, I'll leave that off. Um, but basically, uh, well, I'll leave that at 100%. When we apply this, we'll see that the uh, power jumps up. And you can see the uh, tap changes running over here. So this is the amount of power that it's applying, more or less. <coughs> And it does have some wheel slip protection in case it applies too much power too quickly, which it is doing now, but that's because I have the brakes on. Oops. And this rail driver playing up. I'll leave that at 60. And uh, so, yeah, this is a really nice electric loco um, to drive. It's very simple to drive. But uh, as you can see, we are slipping a bit. So, uh, what I will do is I'll run our force selector, I'll bring that back a bit, and we should see that start, stop slipping. Um, what we have over here is, so this train, you know, obviously by nature of it, it won't go faster than what you tell it to go. Um, and this train has an inbuilt top speed limit of 120 on the AFB. But you can sort of force it to go a bit faster than that if you use the auxiliary controls. So you can see it's set to 2 now, but if I increase the auxiliary, you can see that it pushes that a bit higher. Um, but I'm going to leave the auxiliaries to... Um, normal I'm going to leave them at and um, we can have our speed selector back on and then uh, let that do the job. Uh, stopping the train is the same pre pre uh, procedure once you apply brakes it uh, automatically kills the power and uh, when you apply uh, train brake or automatic brake it does apply some uh, dynamic brakes alongside and it does stop pretty quickly um, uh, considering that it doesn't have any dynamic brakes on the train length, we've only got uh, air brakes on this half of the train. Uh, but uh, it's it's a really nice train to drive. I like driving it quite a lot. Um, it's very relaxing, de-stressing. You, can, you can't change the way that the um, that this uh, display works. That's done automatically, and you can't change that. But yeah, that's basically how that you drive this train. And uh, we'll now we'll go over to the other electric passenger train for this route. Welcome back to Meissen. Uh, we're in the same place with the same coaching stock behind us, the double stock wagons, double deck trains, but we have our different locomotive, a slightly more modern 146 class. Uh, so the cab is very similar to the 185 freight train that we saw. We've got some additional passenger uh, door buttons and our display up here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to turn our reverser in and put that two forwards. We'll go a bit of brake application so don't start rolling and we'll get our doors open using our door selector and uh, passenger doors over here. Next we've got our instrument and uh, master lights on. We're going to turn our cab lights off, I prefer it like that, and we'll have our headlights to uh, headlights normal, uh, headlights reduced, sorry, um, and we're going to come over here and turn that to headlights. Uh, there is a safety switch cut-ins as well. Uh, on the back of the train, we should see that um, everything is set. We're going to S1 Bad Um But that's not set on the locomotive, so we're going to do that. We're going to turn the power on. Are we? No. Uh, where are we going? We are going to Bad Place. Uh, so we can change that on here. So until it says that, unless it's not programmed in, it might not be. Uh, in which case, we'll just leave it alone. Okay, are you on there? There you are. Okay, right, and uh, we'll get our doors locked so you can. Why is the destination display not on? Okay, we'll leave it off. Um, it's being a bit funky. So we will have our train brake on, and with Control R, although it's the same location RSB, as with the 185, RSB. we're going to turn our AFB on and set that to the line speed. 
and then I'm going to use our train throttle to get moving. The brakes, well, the rest of the brakes will now apply and we will start to move. So this train is a, a lot easier to drive, but I think it's got slightly less charm, but the motor sounds do quite, they, 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 the motors sound quite nice. So the general rule of thumb is you don't really want to overpower these locos. Uh, by overpowering them um, is basically throwing this blue bar off the top of the screen. It's going to start drawing our power back now as the computer figures out the braking and acceleration curves to hit the uh, line speed. So uh, we will stop at the next station in the uh, same fashion that we did in the, um, in the uh, 143 got some pretty aggressive clanging sounds going on with the uh, coaching stock behind us but I'm sure everything's a-okay and if it's not it's not my problem <laughs> so we will cut the power off now and go for a bit of brakes uh, these things do stop fairly quickly so um, you can pretty much hit the platform at 60 kilometers an hour and you'll be fine. Uh, also, if you've got the loco end at the front, you've got more or less the whole train length's worth of, um, of run over, so it doesn't really matter that much if you overrun the platform. Uh, underrunning is still a bad thing, undershooting is a bad thing, but if you overshoot, you've got the extra distance of the locomotive, so if the platform is, you know, if, the, if you end up with the back of the locomotive hanging way out here, as long as the front door is the, f the first door of the train is here-ish, then it's fine. So uh, yeah, that's how you drive the 146. Uh, if you have main spec up barn, it's more or less the same procedures for the 146 on there, just with slightly better graphics and slightly better sounds. Uh, so the next thing that we're going to drive, we're going to drive the cab car. Welcome to Dresden Station. We are here in the cab car. Um, we already by default have the headlights set to bright I think and uh, we are a two car consist today with a 143 at the back uh, you don't really have to interact with this 143 at all it will do what you say um, regardless of the control setup that you've got connected to it so we'll jump in the front it's fairly similar to the freight locos or the um, electric locos but not super similar first thing we're going to do is turn our brake key on and throw our master key in and to forwards. Then we can unlock the doors. And uh, so that's headlights normal, uh, not quite high beams, which is, yeah, they're still pretty bright though. We'll leave our cab lights off. Now this train probably at one point had an AFB or there's future proofing to allow an AFB. Um, but alas, there is no AFB. So this is gonna force me to use normal driving controls. Um, over here we have our destination display. Uh, where are we going? We are going to the Flughafen, uh, which is, come on, is it going to set? No, not going to auto set. Where is my Dresden Flughafen? I know it's here somewhere. Come on. Oh, okay. Don't have it. That's fine. Um, we'll leave the display off. Clearly it doesn't have that programmed into the system yet. Uh, and so it's just going to say S2. Uh, that's okay though. We can release our brakes and get moving. Uh, so we got a percent throttle system. And even though the 143 uses the speed set system, um, it doesn't really make a difference. It will still this train will still use the um, the same old kind of um, speed uh, controls that uh, this train uh, this cab car will override the speed control soft uh, well, control things. I'm not doing a good job of explaining this, and um, why we're we not moving? Have I done something wrong? Do I need more power? Loco's not doing anything. That's probably not a good sign. Doors are locked. That's released. What have I missed? 
Boy, I need a tutorial for myself. Oh, learn with me, that's alright. Um, I'll turn our train lights on, even though I don't think that's, the, that's definitely not the problem. Uh, right, try again. There we go. Okay, must have just had some brake applied whilst, uh, whilst I applied the power. Uh, but now we're moving, and um, yeah, th this thing goes pretty quick. And we got our 101 over on this platform. <coughs> yeah, the, uh, this train will accelerate pretty quick because we've only got two coaches and a loco on the back. So just bear that in mind. Power releases fairly slowly because we've got a loco on the back. Uh, so just bear that in mind as well. And I'm actually not that mad that we're dropping speed off because we have the first stop fairly soon. Um, so, uh, come around the bend and it'll be pretty much launched onto us in this first stop. Uh, so, God, who named these stations? Dresden, Freiburger, Strass. Platform 1. Uh, which doesn't make sense, because you would think Platform 1 would be the main line into the city, but whatever. So we'll go some brake application here, and that looks nice. We'll pull right up to the stop board, if there is one. Um, otherwise, just the end of the platform. Uh, you can't really... there's no lenience for overrunning. Instead, there's a lenience for undershooting, um, which, you know, isn't very useful. Um, because obviously you're in the driving cab, you know, which is in the passenger car. So if you overrun, you've only got that much space rather than a whole loco's worth of space. Um, but yeah, this is a, a fun little line to drive, and this is a fun cab car to play around with. It's a fun train, basically. Uh, but yeah, that's basically how you drive the cab car. If you want to cut in your safety systems, and I'll do them with the Talent 2, as I said, um, they are these breakers here. You've got CIFA. PZB and I don't think LZB is engaged on these or it might be included in the PZB. So yeah, that's how you drive this train. Okay, now welcome to, uh, where is this? This is Coswig I think. Uh, is it? No, Grossenhain. We're at Grossenhain station and this is the final uh, loco, or well, it's an EMU, the first EMU and the last train in a uh, in, uh, in all for uh, Navico Dresden. It is the DB442 Talent 2. These are some really, really, really quirky units to drive. I do like uh, them. They're, they're very fun. So we'll jump in the cab. They're different yet again to everything else that we've seen, obviously. Why would they be the same? We've got our temper mat over here. That's our speed set and our speed set increase, decrease. We'll stick our master key in and on. We'll stick our reverser to forward, that's up here. And, as I said, we will drive with safety systems turned on. So we'll turn our PZB systems on and uh, have everything else turned on. Uh, we will unlock doors on the left hand side with this button. And the uh, door ramp here... Yeah, it, I wouldn't play with that, it doesn't really do much. Horn low and horn high, those are some nice, nice pictures next to them. Shows that the Germans are much more refined. You know, everything it doesn't have a nothing has a name really. None of these buttons are labelled. You, know, you just got symbols. You know. I don't think an American driver would you know understand that as a high horn and that as a low. Uh, sorry, that as a high horn and that as a low horn. <laughs> yeah, goes to show. On the right hand side, we have an indirect brake. This is an air brake for the whole train. I wouldn't use it. I would instead use the combined power handle on the right hand side which controls uh, EP brakes and air brakes on the whole train. You would use the indirect brake if there was a brake failure, but you know, the, as if there's going to be a brake failure, it's a simulator. There's no simulated failures. Which you know would be cool, but there aren't any. Okay, we'll get our doors set to locked. And our headlights should be good. So let's get running. Um, so with CIFA, which is uh, controlled by the foot pedal down here, but uh, on the keyboard I would use Q instead to acknowledge it, CIFA is a vigilant system like the alerter on the American trains. 
Um, PZB, so you can see here we've got flashing, and that's saying that our V, our maximum speed, is uh, 45 kilometers an hour over this section. Um, that will always show up when you first start on the train. So to get rid of that, press the end key on the keyboard or uh, PZB release here. And that is basically to release from PZB monitoring. And uh, that's still going to keep flashing because it doesn't know what um, the signals are going to say, but uh, that's fine. Uh, so now we can proceed up to line speed. So when you start the train, it'll force you down to 45, but you can just release that by pressing PZB release. Then when you pass a signal that's displaying anything other than a green or some um, some um, speed reduction warnings uh, that have a PZB ramp, so you're going to have to look for them, you will have to press PZB acknowledge or page down on the keyboard. Um, and then it will force you either down to 40 kilometers an hour, and it'll say, you know, it'll have that same bar that says 40, 45, um, or 80. Now, even if it says 85, you should always go 5 kilometers an hour below that, because there is no tolerance. If it, if PZB is limiting you to 85 kilometers an hour, and you head up to 86, you get an emergency break. The other thing is, if you're not paying attention and you pass a signal that is adverse, even slightly, you know, it could just be a warning, or it could be a distant signal to a warning. Even if it says, even if it's that, right? And if you don't acknowledge it, it's not going to give you any warning, and it's going to launch you into a Zwangsbremsung, which is an emergency break applicant. I probably butchered that pronunciation, and I'm really sorry. Um, but yeah, it's going to give you an emergency break if you don't acknowledge anything. Uh, that's Sifa going off there. Sifa will give you some some warning. Sifa um, is silent for a while and then has some um, some noise and then will apply emergency brakes. Uh, PZB on the other hand does nothing. It will let you know very loud and clear if you overspeed, or uh, not overspeed. If, well, it will if you overspeed, but also if you miss a signal. Um, but as a general rule of thumb, it won't really do anything if you. Um, if you are not paying attention. We've got our flashing signal here, and that's giving us a speed reduction, so I'm going to acknowledge that, and you can see we have a 1000 hertz magnet. Now, within 30 seconds, more or less, we've got to get to under 85 kilometers an hour, and preferably under 80 kilometers an hour. I'm going to hit the temper mat here, so that locks us to 80. And see here, we've got a 1000 hertz magnet popped up, and V max is 85, but you should always stay below 80 if it's giving you 85. Uh, even I wouldn't trust the temper mat either. Um, even though the temper mat is very good and it will very precisely hold the speed, I would not trust it even if it was at um, even if it was set to 85. I'm gonna acknowledge that signal as well. I don't think it needed to be acknowledged, but I acknowledged it regardless. Uh, because we've still got the 1000 hertz magnet carried over from the one before. And the reason why, even though that was a green signal, that uh, the one that I had to acknowledge, the reason why I had to acknowledge it is because it had a 6 at the bottom, which doesn't mean platform 6, as it would in the UK. It means a limit of 60 kilometers an hour coming from the next signal. So, um, because that's under the 85 limit of the PZB, it's going to force you down. Uh, once you pass a signal that is not adverse, uh, you can um, you can um, uh, it will reset. Uh, one key thing to remember is when you're applying brake, remember to turn the temper mat off because if you have your temper mat still left on and you try to apply brakes, it will not let you brake. Uh, so yeah, always apply the brakes when you're doing that. And that is basics of driving this particular train. And now we'll move on to London Commuter for the final two trains. Right, welcome to London. We are here in the Southern Class 377-4 Electrostar. The only two default trains on this route are Electrostars. Uh, so there's not so much variety per se on this route. Anyway, let's jump into the cab. As you can see, we've already got our PIS set. But if you want to change that, that's on the function display over here. 
Uh, we got a pretty simple day out here. So we'll start off by inserting our master key down here and selecting forward on the FNR switch. Uh, next we'll unlock our doors on the correct side. And these are controlled by these buttons and the door close and over here in the same. We do have a speed set here, uh, but it's not super reliable. Um, I'm going to open that door and very quickly close this. I don't know why that was set up like that. Over here we have our safety systems. We have AWS, Vig DSD, and Vigilance. So now a AWS is having a spasm, so I'll come over here and reset that and lock our doors. Uh, we'll also set the headlights. So we uh, during the day, so we're going to have our headlights set to day running. Uh, tail lights are correctly lit at the back as well. Always worth checking. Right, and let's get moving. So this does not have any separate brakes. We've only got our combined power handle. Uh, so I'll s set the speed set just so you can see what happens. Um, but I will knock that up to the line speed, which I think is 40. Yeah. And uh, you'll see what it does. But we are... Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty simple train to drive, this one. It's There's not much to... Um, not much that goes on. AWS is a pretty simple system. Basically, if a signal is anything other than green, you have to... It will make a noise, and then you acknowledge that. Um, if it goes ding then uh, there's nothing to worry about. That's perfectly normal. Okay, we're coming down to an adverse, uh, or not an adverse aspect, but just a lower speed. So we're gonna pull our speed back for that. The brakes release pretty quickly on this train, so there's no need to worry about that really. Um, <coughs> and uh, yeah, you can be pretty, pretty aggressive when you're arriving into stations. Um, I wouldn't say there's any real need to worry about overspeeding as long as you're under 40 mile an hour by the time you hit the platform. Uh, unlike other routes, there are specific stop positions on these routes. Um, if there aren't any marked, it's generally good practice to pull up to the back of the platform. But um, in many stations, there'll be four car stop signs, eight car stop signs, or maybe an S car stop sign, which basically an S car means everything stops here. Um, but I don't think they're at this station for whatever reason. Anyway. We'll get our doors open, and uh, then we can move on to the class 387. Okay, let's move on to that. Okay, we are here at Brighton in our class 387. This is in Gatwick Express livery, and uh, yeah, it's, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's another Electrostar. Uh, visually, it looks very similar, and it has the same sort of characteristics and handling. So uh, we won't spend too much time on this. It's the exact same cab in many respects, uh, except for a couple of things. Like there's no speed set. Um, and it's just a bit more modern. But basically, everything does the same thing. So to get the train turned on, insert the master key, turn that on, select forward on the FNR switch. Uh, you can pull the power up and down and there. I won't really play with that much. It's the same PIS system over here, and if we hop over here, we have the same uh, DSD, Vigilance, and AWS over there. Once you acknowledge that, it'll say TPWS and AWS operational. That's the only other difference. But in, that, in every other respect, it's the exact same train. Um, we'll get our headlights on just for this short demonstration. Headlights are in the same spot up here. So yeah, it's the exact same handling, um, just with a slightly different seating layout for, you know, whatever else. Uh, but yeah, that's the class 387 for you. So that basically concludes all of the trains for rush hour. If you want to see more uh, tutorials, then please do let me know and I will be happy to make them for you. So uh, yeah, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and consider subscribing and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.